most popular forms of exercise in China today and is rapidly gaining popularity in the West. Although to look at it, one would find it hard to believe that it is a form of martial arts. Tai Chi was in fact originally practiced for the purposes of self-defense. So far as we know, Tai Chi made its first appearance in a small village in Henan province about 350 years ago. Any evidence of its existence before this time is based mostly on legend and is therefore somewhat dubious. Legend has it, for example, that Tai Chi was invented by a gentleman named Zhang Shangfeng sometime in the misty past. History, however, records the existence of two gentlemen named Zhang Shangfeng, neither of whom practice any form of martial arts whatsoever. So we are either to assume that there is still some evidence as yet unearthed which would prove the existence of this legendary figure, or that he did not exist at all. On the whole, success in martial arts was built on the principle of might is right. In other words, he who hits the hardest and moves the fastest rules the roost. Tai Chi was evolved to challenge this principle. The aim of it was to oust your opponent with minimum effort by making maximum use of his force. Hence evolved the principle that Tai Chi incorporated softness with hardness, like a needle concealed in a ball of cotton wool. This principle will be better illustrated later on, when some of the applications behind the seemingly effortless movements are explained. Tai Chi first began to be regarded as a form of keeping fit when it was introduced to the inmates of the Forbidden City in Beijing. The nobility were much more interested in Tai Chi as a form of exercise, no doubt befitting their rank and status, than as a means of self-defense. It was from this period that breathing and calisthenics began to be incorporated into Tai Chi. Gradually, the so-called meditational aspect began to dominate the martial side of it. This trend continued, and today, the most widely practiced routine in China is the 24-step simplified form, which is now being shown on the screen. In the background is a demonstration of this routine, which took place in Beijing last year, during the opening ceremony of the 11th Asian Games. It involved 1,500 people, aged between 18 and 63, one half of whom were from Beijing and the other half from Japan. There are five main styles of Tai Chi, namely Cheng, Yang, Wu, Wu and Sun. They each of them have their own distinct characteristics, but the principles of softness incorporated with hardness is common to them all. The most popular style is the Yang style, on which this routine is based. fairly widely taught in Britain, but it is advisable, should you be interested to start, to check that your instructor is registered with the Martial Arts Commission and the British Council for Chinese Martial Arts. More information on these two organizations will be given at the end.
In a moment, we shall start learning the simplified 24 posture Tai Chi Chuan routine. However, before we begin the routine, I should like to introduce some basic positions and requirements. First of all, I should like to draw your attention to one's posture. The most important requirement is that one's posture must be relaxed and natural. You must be inwardly calm and composed, rather like an actor who is immersed in his or her role. This is the commencing form. Place your left foot a shoulder width apart from your right foot. Raise both arms to shoulder height, then bend your knees, keeping your back straight, and lower both arms to about waist height. Again, make sure that your lower back is straight and that you are neither leaning forwards nor backwards. Keep your chest relaxed and don't stick out your backside. It's rather as if you are sitting on a swivel stool, resting both hands lightly on a table in front of you. It is often necessary to support yourself on one leg. Again, the same requirements apply here as above. Keep your body erect and relaxed. Try not to lean forwards or backwards. You should feel fairly comfortable. Shoulders should remain level. Don't raise or lower one or the other, or you'll become lopsided. When turning, your spine acts as an axis. Again, one's posture should be upright. An upright, relaxed posture is the most fundamental requirement in Tai Chi. It is helpful to practice in front of a full-length mirror sometimes, just to make sure that you are not getting into bad habits. Strong legs are also important. Legs should be like the roots of a tree, proof against all weathers. Next, we are going to go through some basic hand techniques. The first one is called Bao Qiu, for this, imagine that you are holding a good-sized beach ball between your hands and that you are applying gentle pressure to it. There should be a space between your arms and your body. Don't hug your arms too closely to yourself, as though you were holding a pile of heavy books which you were afraid to drop. On the other hand, don't let your arms and body sag. Both arms should be curved to achieve a feeling of fullness and roundness, like a full-blown balloon. Make sure both shoulders are relaxed, 
and when in this position, one arm should be about chest level, and the other opposite your navel. Swap the position of your hands by raising your bottom hand and lowering your top hand to your side. Then turn your waist and turn both palms towards each other. Again, both arms should remain curved. Joints should never be locked and limbs should never be fully extended. One should not liken Tai Chi to gymnastics or dance. Often, hand and waist movements should be coordinated. For example, when preparing to push forwards, you should first turn your waist to one side while your arm is extended away from your body and then push forwards and your waist swivels to the front at the same time. The push is called Tui Zhang in Chinese and is done by folding your outstretched arm until it is next to your ear and then pushing towards the front. Please note that your waist and hands move as one. I should also like to do your attention to the hand positions. The most common is called Zhang. For this, five fingers should be separated and fingers should be taut but not stiff. Another position is called Quan, which is a fist. Again, do not clench your fingers too tightly, and your thumb should be resting on the middle sections of your index and middle finger. Make sure all fingers are curved inwards. You should not have fingers sticking out in all directions. Another common position is called Go, which is a hook. For this, all four fingers collect the thumb. Fingers should neither be too bent nor too stiff. Next, I should like to show you some basic leg techniques and stances. It is important to realize that each step in the routine should be performed noiselessly and lightly. To step forward, bend one knee, lift up one foot and step out lightly, heel first. Then transfer your weight slowly forwards. To take another step, transfer your weight back, then lift up your back leg, step out again heel first, and then transfer your weight slowly forwards. The same requirements apply for stepping backwards. Again, each step should be absolutely noiseless. If you are a beginner and your legs are not strong enough, it isn't against the rules to place your toe on the ground halfway through a step in order to regain your balance. 
Gradually, as your muscles get stronger, you can step straight through. But what you must not do is stomp like this. Each step should be done slowly and control is obviously very important. Also, do not transfer your weight as soon as your foot touches the ground. Each step must be very light. When stepping forwards, Step forwards heel first and then transfer your weight slowly. When stepping backwards, your toe reaches the floor first and then transfer your weight backwards. There are four basic stances. The first is called Gong Bu. Here, your front foot faces the front. Weight distribution is 70% on the front leg and 30% on your back foot. Your front knee should be in line with your front toes. Your back leg is almost straight, not too straight nor too bent. Again, the emphasis is on appearing natural and relaxed. Another very common stance is called Xu Bu. For this stance, all your weight is on your back leg, with either your front toe or heel resting on the floor. Don't lock your front leg. This may cause you to tense your lower back and shoulders. The third stance I would like to talk about is called Pōbō. For this stance, both feet are placed fairly wide apart. One leg is completely bent while the other leg remains straight. Try to keep your back straight and shoulders relaxed. Both feet should remain flat on the floor. As you've probably noticed, this stance will take time and practice to do well. What is being shown here is what one ought to aim for. However, it is perfectly all right to do a smaller stance providing you do not lean too far forwards. The final stance is called Du Li Bu. It is a one-legged stance. For this, your supporting leg is slightly bent in order to maintain a straight lower back. Raise your free leg bending it at the knee. Toes should be pointing downwards. The knee should be raised above waist level if possible. Now I should like to talk to you about some Tai Chi Chuan movements. The first thing one notices about Tai Chi Chuan movements is that they look fluid and effortless. There should be no jerkiness and one movement should follow on smoothly from the next, like flowing water. As you can see, each movement is slow and controlled. Joints are never locked, and the upper part of your body should remain relaxed and upright, 
the knees are always slightly bent. Coordination of hands and waist and even the direction of one's eyes should be considered. However, in spite of the fluidity of Tai Chi Chuan, there is a gentle rhythm. While moving from one posture to the next, one should move as smoothly as possible. But there should be a definite end to each posture. Arm and leg movements should be completed at the same time, and at the end of each posture one should be conscious that shoulders and elbows are relaxed, that either both feet or in some cases one foot is firmly rooted to the floor, and of course that one's body is upright. There is a sort of tension, rather like the tension between the bow and the bowstring. It is this finishing off of each movement which keeps Tai Chi from being flat and boring. If one were to compare Tai Chi Chuan to music, one would probably liken it to something gentle but moving. Now we are ready to commence learning the simplified 24 posture Tai Chi Chuan routine. Now we are ready to commence learning the simplified 24 posture Tai Chi Chuan routine. There are 24 separate postures altogether. We shall divide them into eight sections. The first section consists of three movements. The first is called Qi Shi. The second is called Ye Ma Fen Zong, and this is repeated three times. As you can see, each one follows on fluently from the last, yet it is possible to tell where one posture ends and the next one begins. The third posture in this section is called Bai He Liang Chi. Now have a look at this in more detail. Before you start, make sure you are standing straight, eyes are looking straight ahead and both hands hanging naturally on either side. Place your left foot a shoulder width apart from your right foot. Both feet are parallel. Raise both arms to shoulder height. Bend both knees. Lower both arms, keeping shoulders relaxed and body upright. Next posture is Ye Ma Fen Zhong. Transfer all your weight onto your right foot. Raise your right arm to form a holding ball position. Turn your waist slightly to the left. Step out with your left foot, placing your heel down first. As you transfer your weight onto your left foot, raise your left arm and lower your right arm to your side. Your left hand should be facing diagonally upwards. Then sit back onto your right leg, flip your left foot outwards, turn your palms towards each other. Step out with your right leg, transfer all your weight towards your right leg and raise your right hand and lower your left hand to your side. Then sit back on your left leg, transfer your weight forward onto your right leg. 
三。Step out with your left leg heel first. 四。Raise your left hand and lower your right hand to your side. 三。Next posture is 白鹤亮次。Step up half a step with your right foot. Transfer your weight back. Turn your waist to the right, raising your right arm. Turn your waist to the left. Lower your left arm, and adjust your front foot. There are certain points to remember. First of all, remember. That in Gongbu, push your back heel outwards to 45 degrees, so that you are able to turn your hips to the front. If you keep both feet at right angles, you will not be able to do this comfortably. Once more, make sure that your body is upright. This applies to all postures. Body must be upright. Again, it's useful here to practice in front of a full-length mirror. And remember, for this dance, your front leg is slightly bent. This is obviously the wrong version. Now watch these three movements done at their normal speed. As you can see, the holding ball position is a very common linking movement. It is advisable to repeat this group of movements several times to familiarize yourself with them. If you can't do everything perfectly at once, don't despair. Okay. Now we're going to go on to the second section. Again, there are three movements in this section. The first is called Lo Xi Ao Bu, and is repeated three times. The footwork for Lo Xi Ao Bu is the same as that for Ye Ma Fen Zhong, the first posture. The second. Is called Shou Hui Pi Ba. The third is called Dao Jian Gong, and there are four of these. This movement involves stepping backwards. And this will be gone into more detail later. Please note that in a completed gongbu. 
there should be a space of about 10 to 30 centimeters between your feet. This is to give you a wider and hence firmer base to stand on. It would be incorrect to cross your feet over when you step forwards, for then you might wobble. It would then be like walking on a beam or tightrope. So try not to imagine you're walking on a plank and don't cross over either because it will mean that you'll sway from side to side. The same applies for moving backwards. Remember to swivel on the ball of your front foot so that it faces the front. When stepping backwards, do not cross your feet or you will lose your balance. This would also cause your body to sway from side to side and in an effort to remain upright, you might become very tense. Now watch these three movements once more. Turn your waist slightly to your left, then to your right, bring your left hand across your face. Bring your left foot back, Fold your right hand by your ear, step forwards, transfer your weight and push. Sit back onto your right leg, transfer your weight onto your left leg, fold your left hand by your ear, step forwards and push towards the front. Then once more transfer your weight onto your left leg, then onto your right leg, fold your right hand by your ear step forwards and push. Step up half a step. Imagine you are grabbing hold of an arm, transfer your weight onto your right leg, place your left heel on the ground and imagine that you are breaking the arm as you turn your waist towards the front. Turn your waist to the right. Lift up your left foot Fold your right hand by your ear, step back and push towards the front. Then raise your left arm. Fold your left hand by your ear, lift your right foot up, step back and push. Then repeat this movement twice more. Please note that when you are pushing, your index finger should be opposite the tip of your nose at about eye level. And again, make sure that your body is erect. Compare the incorrect and the correct versions. It is important with Tai Chi, as with most things, to nip bad habits in the bud in order to avoid problems later. Constant checking is tedious but necessary. For example, beginners will often distribute weight between both legs for this stance because their legs are not yet strong enough. The correct version, however, requires that all your weight should be supported on one leg now, watch these three movements done at the normal speed.
The first is called Lo Xi Ao Bu. It is repeated three times. And note that there is a slight pause between each one. The Chinese names for the forms do not have a great deal of relevance to the actual application. This is because as Tai Chi developed, it became more of a meditative exercise rather than an aggressive martial art. Thus, the names are more poetic than practical. Translated into English, they would sound absurd, which is why here we have left them in the original Chinese. Now we're going to go on to the third section. This set of movements is called Wei. There are four movements called Peng, Lü, Ji, and an. And this is repeated in the other direction. These four movements form the basis of all Tai Chi Chuan routines. Please watch carefully while I repeat the moves more slowly. Turn your waist to the right, spread your arms out, bring your left foot back and hold a ball. Step out with your left foot, heel first, transfer your weight forwards, bring your left arm to chest level. Imagine you are grabbing hold of an arm, pull the arm back and swing your arms back, transferring your weight onto your right foot. Turn your weight to the front, resting your right fingers on your left arm, transfer your weight forwards. Separate both hands, sit back onto your right foot, pull your arms back to your waist, and push towards the front. Spread your arms out, hook your left foot inwards, hold a ball, this time with your left hand on top. Step out with your right leg. Now watch carefully as these four movements are repeated again in the other direction. The main area to concentrate on in this set of movements is the footwork. Watch carefully. 
Always try to keep your head at one level. Move backwards and forwards slowly, keeping your body upright. Obviously, this is wrong. This is how it should be done. This is the incorrect version. This movement also involves turning 180 degrees to face the opposite direction. First of all, sit back on your right leg, then turn your waist, hook your left foot towards you, then transfer your weight back onto your left leg, bring your right foot back to your left instep, step out with your right leg, heel first, and transfer your weight slowly onto your right leg. Watch once more. Remember to complete the stance by pushing your back heel outwards. The most common mistake made is when people do not bend their knees and forget to transfer their weight. This is what happens. As you can see, this looks extremely clumsy. So make a habit of bending your knees and transferring your weight, keeping your head at one level. Now have a look at the correct version. So, the most important points to remember are, first of all, to bend your knees, secondly, to transfer your weight, thirdly, to keep your back straight, and lastly, to step out lightly, rather like a cat. The fourth section consists of three postures. The first is called Dan Bien. The second is called Yun Shou. And there are three pairs of these. That's the first pair, the second pair, and the third. And then, Dan Bien again. Have a look at these in more detail. Uh, 
Your también. Y sit back. Hook your right foot back towards you. R. Transfer your weight back Bang. onto your right foot. Uh. Then step out and push towards the front, uh. slowly transferring your weight at the same time. Here, imagine that you are stroking a heavy curtain. Step to the side. Move your hand across your front. Step up. Repeat this movement three times. Then form a hook with your right hand. Lift up your left leg, step out, turn your waist towards the front and push. The main problem area here is coordination. That is coordination between your waist and your arms. For example, for Yun Shou, don't just wave your arms around without turning your body. This is wrong. For this step, the feet are always parallel. The space between them is about one fist. Don't turn your feet outwards, like ballet. Also, Try to keep your head at one level. Avoid bobbing up and down or swaying from side to side. Because this is incorrect. This is also wrong, as you can see. Have a look now at the correct version, done at normal speed. It may be worth practicing this movement separately and doing more than three pairs just to familiarize yourself with it. The fifth section comprises of four movements. They're called Gao Tan Ma Then it's Yu Deng Jiao Which is a heel kick Shuan Feng Guan 
Shuang Feng Guan Er, which is like boxing someone's ears. And then, Zuo Deng Jiao. Okay, now watch carefully while these movements are broken down. Step up half a step with your right leg. Transfer your weight back. Turn both palms so they're facing upwards. And then push forwards, adjusting your left foot. Bring your left foot back, cross your hands back to back, step out to the corner, spread both arms out, transfer your weight forwards, then cross both arms with the right hand on the outside, raise your right knee, and kick slowly, spreading your arms out. Kick about 30 degrees to the corner, and then Bring your right foot back, step down, bring both hands to your waist, form two fists, and box someone's ears. Sit back, spread your arms out, hook your right foot back, cross both arms with the left hand on the outside, raise your left knee, spread your arms out, and kick to the back corner. Please note that in the kick, your foot and the corresponding hand are facing in the same direction. Don't spread your arms out horizontally. Also, don't for the sake of kicking high lean backwards. It is better to do a lower kick and keep your back straight. In Shuang Feng Guan Er, remember to bend your supporting leg before stepping out. Don't do this, don't stomp. And then hunch your shoulders and bend your head forwards. This is what it should look like. Watch once more while these movements are done at the normal speed. This is Gao Tan Ma. Yu Deng Jiao. Shuang Feng Guan Er. And Zuo Deng Jiao. I would now like to draw your attention to the direction of the kicks. The right kick is at an angle of 30 degrees to the right of your center line. Swivel round 180 degrees for the direction of your left kick. The direction of both kicks is exactly opposite to each other. And the direction of this movement is the same as the direction of your right kick.
The sixth section consists of two movements. The first is called Xia Shi. And the other Du Li. And this is repeated on the other side. Now watch as these movements are done in more detail. Slide your left foot along the floor, then slide your left hand along the inside of your left leg. Transfer your weight onto your left leg and bring your right hand up as you bring your right leg up. Watch again that these two movements are done in the opposite direction. When you are in this position, try to keep your back more or less straight. Don't bend over too much. Also, remember that as you are transferring your weight onto your front leg, flip your front foot outwards. This will make it easier to bring your back leg up. If you forget to flip your front foot outwards, you'll probably lose your balance. Remember also to hook your back foot towards you. If your movements, sorry, can we do that again? Difficult to bring your back leg up. Okay, now we're going to go through on to the seventh set. There are three movements here. This is called Fair Lady Weaves Shuttle. And you do one on the right and one on the left. Hai Di Zhen translated means needles at sea bottom. Shan Tong Bei. Shan Tong 
Watch while these movements are broken up. Put your left foot on the ground. Hold a ball with your left arm on top. Step out 30 degrees to the corner with your right leg. Push out with one hand and ward off a blow from above with your right hand. Sit back. Flip your foot out slightly. Hold a ball again. Step out towards the corner. Push with your right hand. Ward off a blow with your left. Step up half a step with your right leg. Transfer your weight onto your right leg. Turn your waist to the right, then lower your right arm. Adjust your front foot. Bring your left foot back. Step out and push. Again, make sure that both shoulders are level. It's very easy here to become lopsided. This is obviously wrong. So is this. Try always to keep your body erect. For the movement that I've just done, the direction is 30 degrees to each corner. One hand is above your head, the other hand in front of you. Note that my body is upright. Try not to tense your shoulders like this. That's wrong. For this movement, you are allowed to lean forward slightly. However, you mustn't lean forwards too much and you certainly shouldn't curve your back. This will look very cramped. For this stance, your supporting leg is only very slightly bent. Don't bend your knee too much or turn your toes up. Watch once more. As you become more familiar with the movements and can do them more fluently, there is no need to stop halfway through a step. Try to step right through. Okay, that's the end of the seventh section. Now we're going to go on to the last section, which comprises of four movements. The first one 
is called Zuan Shen Ban Lan Chui. Ru Feng Si Bi. Watch again while these four movements are broken up. Sit back onto your right leg. Turn. Remember to hook your left foot inwards. Form a fist with your right hand. Transfer your weight back onto your left leg. Step forwards. Bring your back leg up. Pretend to slap someone across the face. Transfer your weight forwards and punch. The weight is on your left leg. Slide your left hand under your right arm. Sit back onto your right leg. Bring both hands to your waist and push towards the front. Sit back onto your right leg, hook your left foot in, turn your right foot out, spread both palms out. Cross your hands. Put your feet a shoulder width apart. Separate both hands, both palms facing down. Bring both hands down to your side and put your feet together. Again, for this set of movements, turning round is very important. Remember to transfer your weight. Try not to bob up and down. Control is obviously very important here. Some people forget to bend their knees when they're turning. And they will s the effect is that you sway from side to side. Otherwise, they step out too heavily and stomp. And this looks very clumsy. The other thing to watch out for is that your arms and legs must be coordinated. Arms and legs should reach their destination at the same time. Don't transfer your weight first and then punch. On the other hand, don't punch first and then transfer your weight forwards. or push before transferring your weight forwards. What I showed you just now, both versions were wrong. The same applies for this movement. Remember to spread your arms and turn your feet at the same time. Watch again. This is the correct version. 
Some people can't coordinate this movement. They either forget to transfer their weight or transfer their weight too soon. And the result is that instead of a smooth movement, you get a jerk. The same applies also for the final movement. Remember that there is a space between your arms and your body in this movement. Don't hug your arms too tightly to your chest. And don't lean forwards either when you're crossing your arms. That's wrong. As usual, try to maintain an upright posture. The final posture is the same as the commencing form, except you put your feet together instead of putting them apart and bring your arms down instead of bringing them up. Both feet are parallel, shoulders are level. When you put your feet together, do it as lightly as possible. Stand still for a moment before you give your legs a good shake to relax them. I hope you will all benefit from practicing Tai Chi in one way or another. Thank you for joining me. Okay, you've already completed the whole routine and you've learnt all the movements of the 24 simplified Tai Chi. But you shouldn't forget that Tai Chi is a martial art. The point of it was to oust your opponent by borrowing his force. This is what gives Tai Chi its special characteristic of incorporating softness with hardness. For example, with Lan Jiuwei, now we do it very slowly, at this speed. If we, however, were to use it as a martial art, there would be a sudden burst of force at the end. Only by doing that would you be able to beat off an opponent. It would be the same for Ye Ma Fen Zong, the first posture. Now we do it like this. It looks slow and graceful. As a martial art, you use your shoulder to strike your opponent. Now I'd like to ask my daughter to come. Perhaps you can see better in this way. This is the application for Ye Ma Fen Zong. As you can see, it's a sort of dislocation. It's a very powerful movement. For Bai He Liang Ci. This is very much the same sort of thing. Again, a very powerful movement if applied. For Lo Xi Ao Bu. When your opponent kicks you, you use one hand to brush his foot away and the other hand to push him over. Again, you would have to use a fair amount of force at the end. This is Shou Hui Pi Pa. 
Here you're breaking an arm. For Lan Jue Wei, as soon as your opponent advances, you yield and pull him backwards so that he balance, off balances and trips over. And then as soon as you feel him begin to pull back, that is when you push forwards. This is An. Nowadays, there is an application behind each movement. But because Tai Chi is now mostly practiced for health purposes, it has been slowed down. Well, this is all for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Goodbye.